Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new. My name is Tara. I'm a mom of two boys, a five-year-old and an almost three-year-old, and I make Montessori and motherhood videos here on my channel. In today's video, I wanted to go over the different areas of learning in a Montessori classroom and go over what a typical Montessori curriculum looks like. So both of my kids attend a Montessori school. My oldest son is in the primary class, which is for ages three to six years old and my younger son is in the toddler class which is from 18 months to 36 months. What prompted me to make this video is I actually got the progress reports back from my kids school and it went into all the different areas of learning and I thought man I really wish that I had known this information prior to my kids starting at their Montessori school. I wish I had this knowledge so I really understood what they were going to be learning throughout the year or throughout the three years that my son would be in the primary class. In a traditional school um, like most public schools in the US the teacher will create a curriculum their curriculum is for an entire class of students and those students are usually all in the same age it doesn't span the three years like a Montessori class but it may just be like five and six year olds or all the kids are within one year of each other the curriculum is something that is done day by day and each student is going to be learning the same material on any given day so let's just pretend I'm a kindergarten teacher and I've set out my curriculum for the week and I know that on Monday we are going to start off with a math lesson for the whole class. Maybe they have a worksheet or an activity to do and then we're going to move on to um, a language lesson. Maybe we're going to read at story time. Maybe we're going to work on some letter sounds and then we're going to move on to art or something like that. And you kind of have a progression of how the day goes and each student in the classroom will be following that curriculum. Each student will do the math together, the language together, the art together, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So that is public school classrooms. I think probably a lot of us are familiar with that style of learning. Now in a Montessori classroom things are very different. Children are not taught the same material on the same day. The curriculum is very child-led, which means the child is choosing their lessons for the day. Um, instead of a teacher creating a curriculum for each day, it's more of like an overarching curriculum that is catered and individualized to each child. I'm really going to be simplifying this for the sake of this video, but if you're looking to learn more about Montessori education versus public education, make sure you're subscribed to my channel because I will be putting out that video in the near future. So for this video, I really wanted to dive into what that overarching curriculum looks like in a Montessori primary classroom. Before I go over the curriculum in the different areas of learning, I do want to just read something that they put on here that I think is really important to remember when you're thinking about a Montessori curriculum. It says, it's important to remember that this progress report reflects the full range of skills that are introduced during your child's three years in our primary division. Students are exposed to these lessons gradually as they are developmentally ready. We list the skills and lessons taught during the entire course of the primary division, so you can see the full scope of learning opportunities that will be offered during your child's time in our program. Therefore, your child may not yet have been exposed to some of the lessons and materials we offer. We observe each student carefully to assess their readiness for new skills and lessons. And I think that is really the key that differentiates Montessori and traditional learning right there is that um, these concepts are scaffolded and taught individually to, ch to children. So there's going to be a lot of things that are listed here that my child hasn't done yet. But it doesn't mean that it's not still part of their curriculum and something that they will learn over these three years. And the first area of learning is practical life. Montessori practical life exercises are designed to help prepare your child for daily living by teaching them how to interact with their environment. This area of learning sets the foundation for all the other activities in Montessori education. It reinforces the Montessori principles of independence, coordination, concentration, self-control, self-awareness, and confidence. Starting off under practical life, they have listed care of person, which is independence with toileting, able to dress independently, transport and care of own belongings, independence with coat and jacket, hand washing when needed, dressing frames, which are like these button zipper or snap frames that the children have access to, and sewing. The next is care of environment, work put away appropriately, 
floor spill procedure, floor sweeper duster pan use, scrubbing work, and it says table, chairs, floor, folding, snack setup cleanup, lunch setup cleanup, polishing wood, silver, brass, and plant watering. So as I'm reading this, I'm just thinking this is probably very different than the curriculums that you would see um, from any other preschool or kindergarten classroom because these are not usually things that we consider to be areas of learning, but they, in a Montessori classroom, these are actually the foundations, like the rest, the math, language, come after learning these sort of life basics, and I love that about Montessori classrooms. The next area is called grace and courtesy, greeting, polite communication, proper interruption, workspace respect, material slash environment respect, table manners during snack or lunch, and attentive listening during group time. And the final area of practical life is control and coordination, gross motor skills, fine motor control and coordination, body awareness, controlled movement in classroom, motor planning, and core strength. I'm not gonna share how my son is doing in these different categories, but I do wanna go over how um, they're scored. In social areas, there's an NA or not applicable, which means the skill has not yet been taught or not yet develop me, developmentally expected. R is rarely the child has been exposed to the activity and only rarely displays the skill or behavior. S is sometimes, the child sometimes displays the skill or behavior. F is frequently, the child frequently displays the skill or behavior. And then C is consistently, the child consistently displays the skill or behavior. And then for academic skills, there's again the NA, not applicable, the lesson has not yet been given. I is introduced, that means the lesson has only been introduced to the student. D, developing, skills of the lesson are developing slash being practiced. And S is secure, the skills of the lesson are secure slash demonstrated consistently. And I just wanna reiterate um, again with this that these skills and concepts are being taught over a three year period. So you should never expect a first year student to be able to consistently um, have these skills or you know, even be introduced to these skills in the first year. Some of these things are things that work up, they work up to over three years. The next area of work is sensorial. Montessori sensorial exercises focus on developing your child's ability to understand and adapt to their environment. This area of learning includes the manipulation of specifically designed materials that isolate the senses. Exposure to sensory information such as dimension, color, shape, texture, smell, and taste helps your child to classify and categorize these things around them as they explore them in the world. The first area under sensorial is discrimination of size. So the pink tower helps with sequencing of size. The brown stairs, which is sequencing of breadth. Knob cylinders, discrimination of height and width. And knobless cylinders, discrimination slash sequence of height and width. The next thing under sensorial is refinement of five senses. Fabric boxes for matching textures. Touch tablets for matching slash grading tablets textures. Sound cylinders for matching grading volume, color boxes one, two, three, matching grading seven values of color, thermic tablets for matching and grading temperature, and smelling bottles for matching scents. The next category is geometry, has geometric solids identifying 3D geometric shapes, geometric cabinet identifying 2D shapes, constructive triangle boxes building shapes using triangles. The last category under sensorial is algebra, this includes the monomial cube, puzzle for the power of one, binomial cube, puzzle for the power of two, and trinomial cube, puzzle for the power of three. The next area of learning is math. Montessori math exercises focus on bringing order to your child's experiences. This area of learning prepares the mind for further exploration by first introducing sequential work, including an understanding of numbers, through 10. Each exercise builds upon another and your child gradually moves from concrete to abstract areas such as place value, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and fractions. Activities dealing with mathematics are not implemented at a set pace, allowing your child to grow at their own natural pace. The first category under math is number sequence. Understanding one-to-one -one correspondence, identifies numbers one to 10, associates quantity with symbols one through 10, 
understands concept of zero, knows teen board or beads, 11 through 19, knows tens board slash beads, which is 10 through 99, knows hundred board, which is one through 100. Skip counts using the short chains or skip counts using the long chains, which are cubed. And then the next concept is the decimal system, is familiar with the decimal system, builds quantities with the decimal system, associates quantity to numerals one through 9,000, composes, reads accurately numbers one through 9,999, adds with objects slash golden beads slash stamp game, subtracts with golden beads slash stamp game, multiplies with golden beads slash stamp game, and divides with golden beads slash stamp game. Demonstrates concepts of time, routines, seasons, calendar, clock. Understands concepts of fractions, relationship of part to whole. Is familiar with money math and can accurately measure some items. Moving on, the next area of learning is language. Montessori language exercises focus on increasing your child's listening skills, comprehension, and vocabulary. Scientific research backs up the Montessori belief that children are born with what they need to develop language and that they absorb language with little effort. This area of learning is designed to help your child experience different models of language within their environment. Building a strong vocabulary sets the foundation for understanding the importance of communication and developing increased reading and writing skills. The first area under language is readiness, articulates clearly, displays appropriate conversation skills, listens effectively in group settings, listens effectively in individual settings, recognizes matching works, recognizes things that go together work, recognize opposites, can correctly sequence events and stories, demonstrates vocabulary development. The next area is phonemic awareness, demonstrates appropriate rhyming skills, can discriminate auditory cues, counts words in a sentence, able to clap out syllables in words, identifies component sounds in words, identifies beginning, middle, ending sounds in CBC words, blends sounds together, and builds CBC words with the movable alphabet. The next category is writing, draws and fills in metal inset shapes, uses proper pencil grip, uses proper chalk strokes of characters, traces letters on paper, writes words with a movable alphabet, writes sentences with the movable alphabet, engages in journal writing, engages in story writing, and engages in research writing. And then the final category is reading, able to read CVC short vowel words, able to recognize word family patterns, reads multisyllabic phonetic words, identifies basic sight words, identifies letter blends, knows constant diagraphs and long vowel teams, able to read beginning chapter books and comprehends reading material. So those are usually the four main areas that you will see in any primary Montessori classroom. Our school, we also have culture. Montessori culture exercises focus on allowing your child to experience their place in the world and gain an appreciation and respect for differences. These exercises explore their culture and others while teaching that all beings are fundamentally related. This area of learning helps your child discover the world around them and understand their own significance in it. Cultural exercises usually cover a variety of topics like geography, zoology, history, art, music, science. All of those things tend to fall under this final category of culture. So looking at the progress report for my older son, um, under culture, this covers geography, science, um, environmental education, Spanish, and music. And I'm not gonna get into all the details under culture. I think you kind of get the understanding of what that looks like. But in most Montessori classrooms, you will see things like a botany cabinet. You will see things like um, maps of the world, um, maps of countries, flag work. Um, there's really a lot of hands-on things that fall under these categories of science. But these are things that do tend to differ per classroom and per teacher. These are also things that I've found are more based on your child's interests. So there's obviously the curriculum that your child is working towards learning over the three years. Everything that I listed earlier from learning to 
interact with their peers, to reading and writing, um, but when it comes to these areas of culture, your child can really explore what they're interested in. So if you have a child that's really interested in maps and really understanding um, geography and that sort of thing, a child can put as much time into learning those concepts as they would like to. And that's one thing that I really love about Montessori because it creates a love of learning and a love of learning that they came to a build on their own through these individualized hands-on activities. That's all I have for today's video. If you guys liked this video and you want to see another video like this on the toddler curriculum, give this video a thumbs up and that will let me know that you guys want me to make that video on the toddler curriculum. And as always, if you aren't already subscribed, please make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss my next video because I make videos just like this every week. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!